And there is my front panel done. So eventually that will come around like this, but obviously what's missing now is the other side. And what we're going to do is repeat this exactly the same process that we did for inserting the zip on the other side. And this is where it can get confusing, but just keep your cool and think to yourself, well, this is all this simply is here is a piece of fabric with a right side and a wrong side. And just treat it like any other time that you're sewing two things together and you're putting right sides together. Now, the other thing that you've got to think about is how you want the finished bag to look. Now, the instinct would be to have this facing this way so that your fans are facing up like this here and facing up like this here. The problem with that, with the folding over clutch, is that when you fold that over, you then get these going down and these coming up. And actually, if that's the look you like, there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's your bag, it's your design, it's your project, so you do what you want. But I prefer that we flip this one upside down. So on the front of the bag, the fans are up. And on the back of the bag, the fans are down. And what this means, excuse the noise of this metal bit, what this means is that when that folds over, you have everything going on the right side, facing the right way. And I just like that look. And on the back, you end up with it looking like that. And obviously, because it is a fold over bag, you can always flip it and have it this way. Um, but this is the way that I've sort of chosen. I quite like it like that. So we're gonna to want to attach the zip in between. And this time you're gonna use your lining panel with your pocket on. And we're just going to need to sandwich this zip in between the fabric and the lining as before. So there's my second part panel of fabric and that's right sides facing me. And I just need to place that on top. Yeah, do you remember just as before, so that this edge here is matching, raw edge is matching, remember? And essentially, you know, just up, this is right sides together, isn't it? Do you see what I mean? Right side, right side, and they're touching. So you always have to think about it as two pieces of fabric right sides together. And it's no more complicated than that. And make, make sure that everything's lined up. When you put it down, you don't want it obviously to be like that. You don't want to have um, this misaligned. You want everything to line up. So place your two pieces of fabric so that they line up beautifully. And your zip tape matches up with the raw edge there and you'll have roughly a centimetre beyond the end of the zip tape on either side and that should line up like so. Now at the bottom this panel will hang down a bit, don't worry that will correct itself, it's just because that zip will eventually sit in the middle and at the moment it's sitting down. So as long as the sides match up then you are good. Now you're going to take your second lining panel and remembering that this is the top of your bag and this is the bottom, you want to put that lining panel on there to sandwich everything. Yep, so the top of the bag, the bottom of the bag. So that's the top of the packet, pocket and the bottom of the pocket there. And again, you're lining up all of those rectangles so they should all line up. And we're going to put some pins along here now and we're gonna double check that that's right. So before I'd say pin, check, sew with zips, because every now and then you put it in wrong and actually, oh, I'm picking is a bit of a pain. I'm picking a zip is even more of a pain. So we don't wanna unpick zips, thank you very much. We don't wanna unpick anything. We want everything to go right first time. Of course it doesn't, we know, but. Can you hear the children in the bath? Lucky Tim. <laughs> Putting them to bed. <laughs> right, here we go. So put three pins in there, and I know I'm going to start here and sew down here, so I'm putting them with the pin heads this side so they're easy to pull out. Let's flip it all round and check that it all works. So there's the inside of my bag. There's the front of my bag. It's kind of like creating a book with lots of leaflets. There we go, so I can see that my zip is sandwiched there in between the lining and the fabric so that's all good if I look at those two sides it looks 
the same, doesn't it? And then if I lie that out in front of me, I can see, looking at the front of my bag, that I've got my zip pulled there. And when I fold that over, it's all the right way. And the zip's there. And if I open that, then I get the inside of the bag. So I've done my check. I know that I pinned it correctly. So having checked that the pins are all in the right place, do that zip back up for now. Having checked that the pins are all in the right place, I can now proceed to sewing. Okay, so I hope that made sense. You might want to rewind and go back over that again and lay out your fabric the same as I did mine. But what you want to think about is just you're lying down your panel with the zip attached on top of your other panel and then sandwiching that zip with the other side of the lining and making sure that the top of the pocket is the side nearest the zip and the bo bottom of the pocket is at the bottom of the bag. So we're going to go back over to the machine and we're going to sew and um, insert the other side of the zip. And I've whipped my pins out from this side and put them on this side just because I've got my black thread in the top so I thought I might as well work this way round and that way um, my fabric is draping off of my machine. And then the other thing I did quickly was I just undid the zip down to this point here so that it's not in the way, that chunky puller. I don't want that to get in the way of, um, of my sewing. So everything's nicely lined up there. And I've, I'm going to do the same. If you remember last time when I was sewing, I lined up the edge of that little tongue on the foot there with the edge of the fabric. So I'm going to do exactly the same again. So a few stitches forward, a few back to lock in my stitches, and then off I go. And again, you should be able to see that you've got the ridge there from the, the bulk of those zip teeth, and that's traveling underneath the channel on the zip foot. I'll take out the pins as I go. If you can hear children screaming, they're not being tortured, they are being given a nice bubble bath. <laughs> but they are rather tired due to the excitement of Christmas coming. There we are. So I've got down to this bit here now, which is my zip pull. And I'm just going to move that out the way. So when you do this, make sure you move your foot off of your zip pedal as well, because you can accidentally press on the zip pedal whilst you're doing this. You don't want to do that. Oh, there we go. That was a bit easier on that side. Right, take that pin out. The pins are hard to see on the jacket fabric. In fact, how pretty does the, the wrong side of this fabric look? It kind of has like a stripy effect. I always think the reverse side of the jacket is really lovely. It's just such a nice fabric. I'll tell you the other thing with it being stripy is you almost got a little bit of a guide there as well. So you can tell you're going nice and straight, which is an added bonus. I'm just keeping sporadically, like lifting up, checking that I'm all um, lined up with all edges. Inserted. Now, if you've got this far, it's the first time, or maybe you've only done zip once or twice before, then congratulations, and that's really good. I hope it's gone well. Right, so I'm just going to trim off these uh, thread tails. Get rid of those thready bits. It's always good to trim off your thread tails as you go, because <laughs> then you don't end up all poor. Poor little one upstairs really doesn't want to have a bath. Um, there we go. So yeah, trim off your thread tails as you go, then um, you're not going to get into a mess later. And look, there it is. Our zip inserted, sandwiched between our jacquard side there and our lining on the other side. So we're going to give that a press, as we did before, and then we're going to pop it back under. And exactly like I did on this side, I'm going to do the same and I'm going to do the top stitch down there. And just give it a press.
and then we're going to sew down here. Okay, and now I'm going to do my top stitch on the other side. And just like before, I can line up the edge of my oops. I can line up the edge of my presser foot with the fold on the fabric move my zip out of the way and this side I'm just going to curl out of the way so it can pass through the nook of my machine without too much trouble. Stitch length of three, a few back stitches. And this side of my zip foot is lining up exactly with this fold. <laughs> I've got a giggling six-year-old watching me. Oh, an imp. And off we go. This, we can move the zip out of the way and just carry on and just make sure whatever you do on this side you repeat the same on the other side. There we go, so there you've now got your line of stitching on either side. It doesn't really show up to be honest with you too much, um, the black on the black, but it's nice to have it there and it keeps everything folded away neatly from your zip so it's not going to get caught up. So guess what? We can now get rid of our zip foot because we're just ready to do the final stages. That's how the zip's going to sit when it's finished. Um, we'll just do one more stage of uh, sewing the bag together and bagging it out um, and we're done. Okay, so we're now going to open that zip to about halfway. That's a really important stage. Um, in fact, you can open it almost all the way. It's a really important stage of the, um, the next step. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring the two jacquard sides together. And we're going to bring the two lining sides together. Make sure that that's tucked in. And then grab some wonder clips. And we're just going to clip all the way around the edge. So start off with, so they'll just want to nice and neatly sandwich like that. Because you've done this top stitch, they'll sort of automatically want to fold down. Um, and then let's do another one on the other side. Just make sure everything's lined up and nothing is sort of stressing and pulling. And then we're going to go all the way around and just pop wonder clips all the way around. Or you could use pins if you want. And then the same on the lining side. Um, so you should hopefully just want to line up, raw edges matching. If, some, if something's not quite 100% lining up, don't worry about it. Don't sort of twist it or force it or pull it. You're better off allowing everything to sit as it wants to. And, um, and hopefully it should line up. But if it doesn't, don't force it. Yeah, if it's a couple of millimetres, half a centimetre out somewhere, you can just incorporate that into the seam rather than sort of pulling it and stressing it. You want everything to be quite happy while it's set. Yeah. So I've now clipped that all the way around the edge and we're going to start about here let's move that wonder clip in 
Um, we're going to start about here and sew along here and then come all the way down here and then sew along to the other corner and then come all the way back up and then stop at that green one. And to remind yourself to leave a gap, you can actually double up your ending clip because that will remind you that's where you've got to stop. Otherwise, you might come all the way to the end and then you've not left yourself a hole to turn through. What we're going to eventually do once we've sewn all the way around is we're going to turn the bag back to right sides out via the hole that we've left. So I just wanted to show you, look, see here, there's a slight discrepancy where it's not exactly matching. I'm not going to stress it out and pull it and make that come over there because I, it needs to just all sit nice and flat. So if it's just a little tiny bit out, that's absolutely fine. So let's go to our machine and sew that all up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew all the way around. check and that's in the right position now if that wasn't quite there yet then pivot it back and hand wind another stitch and do that manually but I've done it before I've managed to uh, get that spot on where I want it to be so I'm just my seam lines here is just under 1.5 a mean one and a half centimeters be just over a centimetre really because I know that that zip uh, end I want to catch it in but I don't want to there's no need for the big seam allowance and I don't want to um, log off too much of the bag and make the bag smaller I'm going over a fair few layers there just let my machine chomp over that I'm using white thread for this because um, it would be a fact to change it halfway through and actually the white won't show up too much on this black and white jacket but you could change your thread if you wanted to halfway through the fabric's walking a little bit there if your fabric starts walking a bit and by that I mean that the, the presser foot is sort of pressing on it and creating like a wrinkle which means it's then not going to line up at the bottom just sporadically lift up smooth everything and let it back down again and then you can also sort of smooth the fabric as you go so it all goes under sometimes with heavier fabrics or with fabrics with a bit of pile on them they can warp a little bit so, a couple more stitches there just hand around them because I can actually use the stripe of the belt on the jacket as a bit of a, um, a reference to get a nice straight seam. Once you come to this side and you with this um, little D-ring on it, make sure that that's tucked inside um, so that it's... Um, not on this side, so it's nice and flat on the inside of your project. there to remind me that I need to 
stop and I need to leave a gap that's sort of big enough for me to get my hand in and turn that through. So we should just carry on for a little bit more and then I'll do a back stitch. And there we go, that's that done. So we've now sewn all the way around that bag. Now before I trim away at any corners, which I will do later, I'm just going to turn it through and just check that everything is looking okay. Then if I'm happy that it is all alright, then I shall reinforce the corners and then trim them. Um, just because I like to give it a little check first before I take scissors to anything. Um, you can always unpick, but you can never uncut. <laughs> So we check that everything's all sitting nice and this is the stage where it looks like a mess <laughs> you think what is going to happen <clears throat> it's good to have a point turner as well for this so we can... obviously the corners aren't going to be terribly sharp because i've not cut, cut them down but let's just check that everything is sitting right and that i've got no wobbles or funny bits well I've probably got lots of wobbles and funny bits but I don't want them on my handbag <laughs> okay so that zip is nicely inserted at that end and that end be happy with that it all looks pretty good I'm going to do a much better job of turning it in a minute Let's just do a quick check that everything is okay. Yeah, so now that I'm happy that that's all right, I will turn it back through. I know it's like a bit more time consuming, but it's worth just checking before you cut anything, just in case you want to tweak anything. Um, it's much easier to unpick and restitch an area if you haven't cut the corners away. There we go. Okay, so one last step, um, or not, not a couple more steps. I'm just going to go back over those corners and reinforce each corner by sewing over the top of them again, um, just to make the corners really strong. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut across um, the, the excess fabric so that the top corners turn out nice and neatly. So it is a little bit tricky to see on this jacquard, but I think I can just about make it out. There we are. And I'm just going to simply go back over the corners just to give them a little bit of extra strength. Just so that when I do trim away and when they turn out they're just going to be that little bit more reinforced. Just going over my existing stitches. This is where it's actually advisable to do in the daylight. Oops, I went too far. And if you go too far, you can back wind one stitch. You get a little loop there, and then that little loop gets drawn up. And you go around. Don't know if it's very clear to see what I've done there. I've just gone over the top and all four. Trim away the threads and then on each corner without cutting my stitching 
I should just cut away that excess fabric. And that will just let me turn through the bag nicely. And those corners have all been trimmed, so I'll now turn it one final time back through to the right side. Make sure that you leave your zip open so that you can turn it all the way. And then I've got my point turner here, so I can just put my hand in the hole and very carefully, I don't want to make a hole in the fabric. I can just, with the aid of my point turner, just um, tease out the, the corners of that, of that bag. Into a point. And again, just take your time with this. It's all the little finishing touches that will make all the difference to your bag when it's all Sorry, I just realised I'm not on the screen now, am I? Same on that line in. Tease out those corners. Then I can tuck the lining back inside my bag. And just using my fingers, I'm just going to push out that corner where the zip is. That's the trickiest one. That one, I just put my finger up there and push out because it's sort of inside out. Um, and you will get sort of a slight angle there where that zip is, that's fine. And the same, the other side isn't quite so tricky, but again, you will get an angle there. It obviously needs a bit of a press. But there we go. So we're nearly there. Just need to Put the lining underneath the machine and close that hole that we left there. And I'm just, I'll just use a little stitch right on the edge. You could hand stitch that close if you wanted to, but it's on the inside at the bottom of your bag. I don't think anyone's really going to see it. So I just think a little um, stitch on the machine just to close that will be absolutely fine. And if you want to, you can give it a little press first. I'll put my ironing board to one side for now, so I won't be doing that. But normally I probably would if I wasn't doing a video. There we go. And I'm right. Let's get caught up there. I'm just right on the edge there. There we go, so let's close that up. So give everything one last little press and then just the finishing touches. So if you take your ribbon and then I like to angle the ends for a professional finish. Oops. There you go. And then you can put some fray stop on the end of there or some clear nail varnish. And then we're going to thread that through the the zip pull. So just fold in half and in half again to make it really small at the end. Post that through your hole on your zip and then bring those tails through there and pull that tight and there you have your ribbon attached to your zip to create that nice decorative um, zip pull effect. And just attach the D-ring to the lobster clip. You've got your wrist strap there. And we're done. And there 
is your lovely Deco Jacquard clutch bag all finished. I hope you've enjoyed that sew along today. Thank you very much and good luck with your sewing. And I shall see you all, hopefully, in 2021. Have an absolutely amazing Christmas. Wishing you all the very best. Stay well and bring it on New Year. Bye for now.